The advent of the Rural Electrification Administration ushered in an era in which neighbors were able to join with neighbors to form not-for-profit electric cooperatives and bring electricity out of the cities and onto the farm. From that day in 1935, when the first REA poll was set up in Piqua, Ohio's cooperatives have worked toward the goal of providing clean, safe, affordable, and reliable power for their members. To better serve members, Ohio's cooperatives needed to control their source of generation. Buckeye Power was formed, and after several years, reached an agreement to build the Cardinal Station. Since 1968, Cardinal has been bringing the light and the power to rural Ohio. We flip a switch and the light comes on, but did you ever stop to think about from where that power comes and how it's produced? Ohio's countryside. Rural Ohio is served by consumer-owned electric cooperatives which offer competitive rates and excellent service while being an involved and vital contributor to the communities. Cardinal Station is part of the strength of Ohio's electric cooperative network. Located in Brilliant, Ohio, along the Ohio River, Cardinal Station's three coal-fired units generate over 1.8 million kilowatts, or enough power to serve nearly a million consumers. Buckeye Power Incorporated, a power and transmission generation cooperative owned by the 25 electric distribution co-ops that serve Ohio, owns two out of the three units at Cardinal Station. Coal is burned to produce electricity at Cardinal. To provide enough electricity to meet the needs of an average electric cooperative member, Cardinal burns about 6 million tons of coal annually. Coal is delivered in three ways, by truck, by rail car, and by barge. Conveyor belts move the coal to the storage piles or into the plant for immediate use. A significant amount of coal used at the Cardinal plant comes from nearby mines. Cardinal's unloading facility can handle 5 million tons of coal per year. Once the conveyors move coal into the plant, pulverizers reduce it to a fine dust, like talcum powder, which is mixed with air and blows through large pipes to the boiler. Automatic feed systems operated from the main control room determine how much coal is fed into the unit. Each unit has its own control room, which serves as its nerve center, adjusting coal consumption and power production to meet the changing demand for electricity. The boiler is the focal point of each unit. The coal is burned to heat water in the boilers into steam. The pressure of that steam turns a turbine, which turns a generator, which produces electricity. Even though the physics is simple, the technology is not. Cardinal uses a 20-story boiler, but its size doesn't mean it's easy for the casual observer to see. It's surrounded by the pipes that move air and coal in, fans that draw air in and out, tubes that move water around the boiler, pipes carrying steam to the turbine, and pollution control equipment. The boiler itself is suspended from the top of the building, which houses it because the temperatures inside can cause it to expand downward by as much as 12 to 18 inches. The pulverized coal and air are blown into the boiler from burner ports on the boiler walls and ignites. Each of these ports is about three feet across, a massive fire with temperatures that can reach 2,500 Fahrenheit burns inside the boiler and heats ultra-pure water inside one-inch tubes to more than 1,000 degrees, causing the water to flash instantly into steam. High pressure, high temperature steam from the boiler is directed into the turbine generator through heavily insulated pipes. Inside those orange housings at left, the turbine is connected by a shaft to the electric generator. As steam hits the turbine blades, the shaft turns the generator's rotor at 3,600 revolutions per minute. Inside the generator, the rotor turns, rotating an electromagnetic field. That produces electrical power at 26,000 volts. That power goes through a transformer and is stepped up to 345,000 volts, then sent out on transmission lines to consumers across the state. Two water circulating systems work simultaneously, but the boiler water and condenser water never actually mix. Once the boiler steam has given up most of its energy in turning the turbine blades, it passes through a condenser below the turbine floor. The cool water circulating through the condenser lowers the temperatures of the steam, converting it back to water.
pure water is then forced back into the tubes lining the boiler, where the fires inside recharge it into steam. The warmed condenser water is pumped out to the cooling tower, where it cascades over film material that breaks the water into fine droplets. Air rushing through the base of the tower naturally cools the droplets, which then collect into the base to be pumped back to the condenser. The hyperbolic shape of Unit 3's 430-foot cooling tower creates a natural draft as more than 300,000 gallons of water per minute circulate, dropping the temperatures of the condenser water by 20 degrees. The small amount of water lost through evaporation from the top of the cooling tower is replenished from the Ohio River. While the cooling systems handle the heat, special equipment is cleaning the hot air coming from the boilers. About 10% of the coal that's burned inside the boiler is not consumed. It remains as particles of clay, rock, and minerals known as ash, similar to the ash left when you've built a campfire. About 80% of this non-burnable material, called fly ash, floats out of the boiler along with hot gases. Electrostatic precipitators prevent fly ash from being discharged into the atmosphere by the use of electrically charged plates to attract and catch the ash. All three cardinal units have precipitators, which remove over 99.5% of the fly ash produced by burning coal. That translates to about 60 tons of ash per hour when all three units are running at full load. Fly ash that's collected is mixed with water and pumped in large pipes to a collecting pond for disposal. The other 20% of the ash produced, which falls to the bottom of the boilers, is called bottom ash. It's stored in ponds and is sold as an ingredient in road construction material and cinder blocks, or for snow and ice control on highways. Buckeye Power is committed to preserving a healthy environment and spends millions of dollars annually operating and maintaining environmental control equipment. A number of wildlife and habitat observation and preservation projects are ongoing at Cardinal Station. Generations of herons, egrets, and other wild bird species have grown up at the fly ash pond. The newest addition to the wildlife around Cardinal Station are peregrine falcons. The Cardinal plant is equipped with state-of-the-art environmental controls, making it among the cleanest coal-burning power plants in the world. We've invested about $1 billion in advanced technologies like electrostatic precipitators, selective catalytic reduction systems, and flue gas desulfurization systems that remove more than 90% of regulated pollutants such as nitrogen oxide, sulfur dioxide, and mercury. Ever mindful of doing what's best for its members, Buckeye Power tied the flue gas dispersal system with the cooling tower, avoiding the cost of building a new stack. It's the first time that this type of system has been used in North America, and it saved millions for Ohio's cooperative members. Buckeye Power is at the forefront of renewable energy in Ohio. It has agreements to purchase power from biodigesters at a poultry farm in Mercer County a dairy farm in Williams County, and a hog farm in Morrow County, along with methane generation at landfills in Hancock and Perry counties. These projects supply enough electricity to serve more than 3,500 homes. Buckeye Power also has a 30 megawatt share of the Story County Wind Farm in Iowa. Buckeye has installed solar-powered panels at locations across the state, and other renewable sources will be added to Buckeye's power supply as they become available. Cardinal Station's size and complexity are impressive, but what's really impressive is that more than five decades ago, a group of two dozen small electric companies found a way to unite with the common goal to build the Cardinal Station. Ohio's electric cooperative's continuing investment in Cardinal demonstrates our commitment to the vision and our values, accountability, integrity, innovation, and commitment to the community as Touchstone Energy Cooperatives. The power of human connections coupled with the commitment to member service is a testament to the power of the cooperative spirit.